Welcome in to the Clinton Issues Podcast, episode 13, live, local, and late breaking here. We, uh, We're on TV now. Yeah, yeah, well, look at that on YouTube. We've moved this to YouTube uh, so our viewers on the Rivals.com website can see it. So now, since we're all together, we thought, why not record it? So instead of seeing this logo, you're seeing this logo with the people in front of it. Yeah, but don't get too used to this because I'll be back in sunny Miami and away from this cow town. There's uh, a high pressure system moving through here that's going to blow <laughs> Rob back yeah, down to yeah, Miami. Absolutely. So uh, anyway, enjoy the show. We'll talk about our regular topics. National Signing Day was... National Signing Day. National Signing Day. Yesterday, we're probably by the time you hear this, two days ago, but uh, the three of us were in this room talking to each other all day long. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. So many storylines. I guess we should just, re- real quick, before we jump into the rundown, what kind of jumped out to you kind of as being the biggest overall maybe theme of the day? It was nice that it wasn't as insane as always. There was no missing letter. Nobody's mom was running around with the letter. There was no high drama. Nobody faxed in three letters. Um, so, you know, we avoided that, really. I mean, it seems like every year there's always one story like that, but not this year. Nick, you're a casual observer of recruiting. We know you're very involved with us on the video side, but you're not necessarily involved with the day-to-day drama that Rob and I may deal with with uh, players and everything like that. What was your what was your kind of uh, thoughts on the day? Well, I think uh, you guys have talked about before in previous uh, podcasts and, and conversations that we've had about how there's not like as many five stars in this class or you know higher tier players as uh, as there have been in previous years. And I think with so with with fewer players to have the eyeballs on, there's been less of a you know less of global attention paid. You know, I think across the board to you know what what's this kid going to do? What's because you know if the kids aren't as high profile by n- n- some not sometimes no fault of their own. So you're on the record as the biggest takeaway is this class is awful. Well, yeah. I mean, you said as, I mean, as no, but yes. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not the scout. He I'm didn't, not the, I'm he not didn't the feel evaluator. The buzz. You didn't feel the buzz, Nick. That's what you're saying. You didn't feel the maybe the the like you said the national stories, the Alex Collins running off. I mean, like that's it. If there's not a story like that, I mean, there was no crazy. I mean, the the, the skydiving video was cool or whatever, but. There was that didn't that's not on the front. Yeah, it wasn't. That's not on Good Morning America. It's only or, only dorks like us know about that. Right, you know, it definitely didn't didn't cross. wasn't wasn't a Taylor Swift. Yeah. It was more of a uh, I don't know. I can't think of a One uh, Direction. No, 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 no. Taylor's a crossover from country to uh, mm-hmm. the pop. I was trying to think of a country artist. Uh, uh, I don't know. Zach Brown band is a country artist, I think. I think they have crossover appeal. Uh, okay, I don't know anything about country music. Leanne Rhymes, she never did. She have crossover appeal? Yeah, she, her crossover appeal right now is being on the cover of magazines, being too skinny and breaking right. up marriages. And well, enough of that. Uh, uh, derailed. I wonder if any marriages got broken up over recruiting yesterday. We you ever see, see those uh, <laughs> house divided license plates? Maybe. Um, so let's talk about. I guess the one big story that we thought was going to blow up that hasn't yet, Demetrius Robertson. Uh, yeah, there's still some potential for shenanigans, right? I saw yesterday Georgia missed on some of the guys they thought they were going to get on TV, and we'll talk about that later. And Demetrius Robertson was all of a sudden being held up as the saving grace. It's like, well, once we get D-Rob, missing on these guys isn't going to matter. I don't think they're going to get him. Yeah, I got Oh. Let me ask you a question. Right, we we've seen we've seen them at uh, you know, my recollection of the Charlotte camp, the RCS camp. Him and Mecole Hardman looked like they were BFFs. You think now with Mecole committed and D Rob kind of sitting out there and some spots available, you think he recruits D Rob or are they not even that close? It just seemed like they were. They were palling around that day. I agree on that. I think the I think the thing with Demetrius Robertson is he's not a 2016 teenager like, from an aspect of how yeah, he uses he's... his phone like he just didn't have he just didn't have his phone for a while and I and I called his because I called his number it was disconnected and we see that happen all the time we're like oh, sure. you, you know new lost a lost a like, password man, if you cover the junior colleges like I used to <laughs> I mean some of those dudes who got a new phone <laughs> right. once a day I forgot the password to my phone I just threw it away and bought a new one <laughs> so, so I hit him up on Twitter and I was like what happened to your phone he's like Oh man, I broke it, and I just didn't have one for a while, so I just used my brother's whenever I needed the phone. So, so I, I just don't think he's in contact with Hard. I don't think he talks to those guys on a regular basis. One of his teammates got offered by Cincinnati yesterday, and he tweeted the D, Demetrius tweeted the offer at me, and then I DM the kid because we're planning the Rivals Camp Series right now. I said, "Oh, we got to get you in a camp. 
what's closer or Atlanta or Orlando, blah, blah, blah. And I said, what, what's up? What do you think's up with D-Rob? And he was like, man, I have no idea. <laughs> like, uh, I, you know, I, I mean, obviously, Demetrius himself doesn't know. Uh, it's not like he's holding out a decision. I mean, I think he'd be committed by now if he knew. Right. Well, that, see, that's the thing. If you, what do they always say? Follow the visits? Yeah. He hasn't been to Georgia in ages. Now, he's canceled multiple Alabama visits, but I don't think it's a diabolical plan. I just think... Some people are just flakier than others. We know. Yeah, no. Some people are flighty. Nick and I know. We, we Nick and I schedule these video shoots. People that come to the office yesterday, they, sure, they might show up or they might not. <laughs> One person just didn't come at all, and his dad <laughs> called me like nine o'clock. He's like, "Oh, my bad," you know. And I was like, "All right, it then. Happens. Well, yeah." So, I mean, I'm oftentimes late, as Nick will tell oh, you. Oh man, uh, you the know. worst. Yeah, I mean, you know, so that, that's just what happens. So I, I just think. Now, the, the new information, which I haven't even written about, really, uh, will be a straight-to-podcast exclusive, I guess. From what I gather, and this is, I didn't speak to Demetrius himself, I don't think he was thrilled with the fact that Georgia ended up taking a lot of wide receivers yesterday. And they might pitch Hardman as a DB, but I think, you know, D-Rob can attest, <laughs> if anybody can, that, you know, me call struggle at DB. You mentioned that camp Jeez. where the two of them at this camp, you know, you guys know, but the listeners don't, they both insist on being athletes. I they know. went head to head the entire camp. Actually, you know, I'll, I'll put a few clips up. Okay, yeah, yeah, cut, cut so the, people can see. We'll cut the clips in the video version, and they both just kept beating each other. Whoever's the wide receiver won over and over again, and they kept like pointing and gesturing to us, like, "See," and I was like, "What you guys?" The guy covering you is terrible. Like covering you. I was like, <laughs> "You guys are both wide receivers. What am I supposed to be impressed by?" That, you he was doing that at the All Star season too. He's insisting on Miko was insisting on playing defensive. <laughs> <laughs> right, and he, and he played DB at Army the first day, and it didn't go well, and then he popped in yeah. a wide receiver. But he was still taking reps throughout the week. Right. He could be a really good DB, but it would be a down-the-road situation. It would be some no serious coaching because Nick and I went and watched him play. He's playing quarterback. And, he, of course, he was an All-American DB, according to some, I think it was USA Today. According to somebody on and the even Internet. Even though, I mean, Nick and I saw him a couple times, and... He played DB like three snaps. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's safety. Yeah, it's safety. It must have been pretty impressive. Uh, we love you, Mikkel, uh, but uh, we think you're a wide receiver. So, uh, so he wasn't happy with that. Alabama lost Tyler Simmons to Georgia yesterday, mm -hmm. wide receiver uh, from right down the road. We, his video was the one that bugged in on us. <laughs> and now... What, could you imagine this? If Tyler Simmons flipping to Georgia ends up costing them Demetrius Robertson, because now Alabama, who had said, if we don't get that letter on Wednesday, We're it's over. Him. Yeah, they now, got a giant hole now. now. Now they missed a wide receiver that they didn't think they were going to get. Our boy Riley Cole got kicked out down the street, so we know they have a scholarship available. <laughs> <laughs> and, ah, poor Riley. And they're holding it for Demetrius, and they said, it's on. Acor according to my sources. <laughs> sources! Sources say on that side, uh, Alabama, uh, he called Alabama yesterday and said, look, I'm still interested. That's on me, coach, for missing three official visits. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'm a flake. I would, love to, I would love to come visit. So the question is, tomorrow is the, really the, the day of hour, but you know, this podcast will be out. Does he show up at Georgia? I have a feeling he's not going anywhere this weekend, and he'll do the old midweek job. My, my maybe maybe we'll get my dream of a, a recruit going to a college campus to commit and then committing to a different college. Well, that would be crazy. I, I, man, it's almost what AJ Brown did. I would have loved for AJ Brown to have driven onto a campus of a school and then picked the <laughs> rival school. All right. Hold on, AJ. We'll get there in a minute. So, guess what, Demetrius? We're in for we're in for a haul. I think I'm going to be out for the count starting next Wednesday when I take uh, some personal time, mm -hmm. and I have a feeling. It's good. There's going to be some scrambling going on. I will be going down to Savannah at some point to see him, and maybe we'll get on the pod. We'll maybe get him as a guest. Hey, I was stuck in a tarmac there for three hours the other day. The I day won. before signing I day. Know. I I popped out and went and see him. I really wanted you to go see him. So, so let's move on. Uh, I guess we should talk about Tennessee, one of our loyal uh, fan bases. Now, sure. all of a sudden, we have the Vols fans listening, so we'll see. They're directing some Man, ire at you, which, we'll, listening which for, we'll talk about. For the worst ranking in Rivals.com <laughs> history. Yeah. Let's start with uh, Jonathan Kong Kongbo, as we're calling King Kongbo. We're fighting the King Kong push. King Kongbo is my favorite recruit because he's like a mystery man. He's got no photo on Rivals.com. I don't cover Juco's anymore. I've never seen the kids. I think he has like a low res. I think he has a low res. Like he has a photo, but it's not. But his face is like blanked out like yeah. blank man. <laughs> 
Here's the question. I mean, let's take a look at let's take a look at his face. But here's I mean, the question: Is does he exist? He definitely exists. He's six six, two sixty. I don't think he's a cons I don't think he's like a unanimous five star. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, no, we definitely have like it's his JUCO headshot from like the they must have sent it to us. So we didn't know what he was going to do. A yesterday. stock photo of some male model. Right. He, <laughs> said, he said he was going to push the time back. He ends up committing to Tennessee, and now they're saying. You know, well, hey, yeah, we gotta we gotta back up and, and remind everybody that this man told like every college that he was committed. Yeah, what, to them. he one hundred percent told USC. Yeah, he was committed to like four schools. You were on the verbally, phone silently. You, Rob was on the phone working the phone lines the other morning in in uh, someone's cubicle here at the Atlanta office, and I heard someone tell you, yeah. I don't know who it was, say he's told USC See, he's committed. Yeah, he told a couple schools he was coming. He told Tennessee. He told we know he told USC. I think he told Florida State. So I think they were all expecting. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, nah, this is why he's my favorite guy. Well, and then you, I saw you, I heard you tell someone, change my prediction. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So we end up, he didn't even, he wasn't even on TV making the announcement either. No, no he's he just, just tweeted chilling. that it was going to happen. And then all of a sudden, it, and then Tennessee, Tennessee let us know it was happening yeah. with a tweet with a bunch of oranges, which I guess it's go big orange. But it's interesting that you'd think Syracuse would be like, yo. Yeah, step off our emoji. You're stealing my emoji at this point. I think that's a better. I think that's a better move for him to tell every school that's interested that he's going to him, as opposed to telling one school that he's definitely going. Because we've talked, especially down the stretch here, of schools pulling scholarship yeah. offers Absolutely. and things like that. Oh, so, yeah. so if he gets one pulled, he wasn't going there anyway. You know? Well, and that's what the word was. Someone told me last night that that Alabama didn't want, wasn't he wasn't a take for Alabama at the end, which I find hard to believe. But you never. Know. I mean. Tied. Guess what? Riley Cole. Not a he wasn't a take for Alabama either. You know, not, not a five star in your playbook, but a five star in your hearts. In, uh, in all of our hearts. And that, that eases the blow then for Tennessee because we talked about them missing out on Derek Brown, but they get him. Right. They get we don't know, I don't know anything about this guy. Here's the thing. Here's the thing that, that I think we're going to see. He's 6'6, 220, or 260, excuse me, we haven't listed that. Kyle Phillips was a five star last year. I'm sure he's very good. I don't think that the people that rank junior colleges for us just. Put five stars well, no, on him no, because no. he was big. I'm not saying that. I just think it's great. Blair, that, Blair and Gula. I just think it's great <laughs> that one I have person. no idea who this kid is. <laughs> yeah. um, but here's a, here's my concern. You have five star Kyle Phillips, who, you know, I don't know exactly how much I can elaborate here, but I can tell you he wasn't thrilled about playing defensive tackle this year. He they play they played him defensive tackle. He he got banged up, nicked up a little bit because he's not defensive tackle size. He's a, I mean he. The kid runs like a four six forty. He came there to be an edge rusher. They slid him inside. I don't think he was happy about it. Now, what do they do? You have Derek Barnett, who's probably going to be a future NFL yeah, guy. Man, and King Kongbo sounds a lot and, cooler than King Phillips. Yeah, King Kongbo ain't going to be sitting on the bench. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> He's going to come and expect a place. So the question is, did they try to get him bulked up and moved inside? Because I, I think if you're putting Kyle Phillips inside all year, I don't think he's going to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, you know, we, we, we have National Lying Day. As yes, absolutely. <laughs> as you mentioned, Landon Dickerson, top 50 guy, I, th I think number 43 maybe. Nick, I don't know if you made a video for him or not. You remember what he was ranked? No. Nah, anyway, so. so the but top, top 100. Guy. Right, yeah, whatever. Borderline five star. I, I loved him. I mean, just a mean, you know, I have a soft spot for super mean offensive linemen. Yeah, like to smash people's yeah. faces into the turf yeah, after the play dudes. is over and stuff like <laughs> yeah. that. And Dickerson fits that mold. Just a guy, I mean, at the Charlotte camp where the uh, the other two jabronis were like, going. This going. podcast is a big fan of cheap shot artists. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, truly. So those two jabronis were going head to head and D-Rob and, and Miko. And I just remember Dickerson, just, he was a three star at that camp, just killed everyone. I mean... Uh, yeah, and then also took shots after the whistle. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Definitely <laughs> smashed a kid's face into the ground. And this is not in pads, people. This is <laughs> real Womack special. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what I wanted to bump him up is what I saw him do that. <laughs> so, so anyway, he picks Florida State. The talk out of Tennessee was, well, we didn't have room for him. I mean, we he wanted to come here, but, I mean... Yeah, we just don't take those right. Rivals 100 kids. Yeah, now Nick and I saw him at the Shrine Bowl. He showed up in an Alabama hat, and then we were like, hey, Landon, we got to do a video interview. And he specifically went up to his room and got a Florida State hat, right, and put it on for the interview. So I think he probably knew at that point sure. he was going to Florida State. And I told Tennessee fans, you know, look, we didn't get the vibe. I didn't get the vibe. You know, he wouldn't put out the vibe for the Vols. Uh, a lot of times we can read these kids and what they're going to do. They end up taking a two-star out of Miami. Which worst ranking in the history of Rivals. Has been called by some people the worst ranking in the history of Rivals. <laughs> hey, look, man, 
it's going to have to be pretty bad to be worse than the J.J. Watt ranking. I mean, that was a really bad ranking. If we're going to top that, well, I mean, this guy's better. This guy better be a Pro Bowl. Would you consider J.J. Watt the worst ranking, or would you consider somebody like who never didn't even have a profile, like Josh Norman or Malcolm Butler? Or well, no, because maybe we weren't aware of their existence. I mean, the fact that we ranked J.J. Watt as a two-star means that somebody saw and knew that this was a person that existed on this earth. Well, but I think... He was he, playing tight end at the time, wasn't right. he? He wasn't even... Yeah, being he, ranked oh, as yeah, a defensive end. He was a five four two star. Though. He wasn't a five two. Here, here's the issue with with JJ. I think, uh, yeah, he, well, he's, he looks pretty tough. He was six five two twenty. Um, there's no news articles on his profile, which the website's going through some transition. Although there. when he won MVP or when he was in the conversation for MVP, didn't he have six receiving touchdowns at tight end yeah, as well in the NFL? Plays. Yeah, so he should have at least been a three star tight end. Yeah, see, but, worst ranking in the history of no, Rivals.com is a tough mountain to climb. That was in 2007 which will quickly tie this back into Tennessee. That was in 2007 where it was much harder to see everybody. So you can, I think they, there was a lot of slapping of two stars on guys we didn't see. You saw this kid play, which we're, we're not going to get into the ins and outs of why he's a two star. I think Rob's, you know, Rob had to fight the Miami fans over it for Yeah, now months. they don't care. Now they're like, fine. Yeah, now they're like, yeah, that kid should have been a two star. <laughs> we never wanted him, which is how it works. Yeah, now um, they, they dropped him. You know? But my point is, you have to imagine that Tennessee, which took several receivers in the class, and they have several highly rated receivers, which uh, some of us at this table are hoping pan out because uh, they rank them as five stars, Josh sure. Malone. Um, you think if Dickerson said, look, I'm coming, they would have told our boy, what is his name? Our it, maybe it is the worst ranking in the history of Rivals.com. Maybe they really like this guy. Maybe he's a five star. Maybe Landon's the worst ranking. That's possible. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Tennessee, you had a great day. Don't be, don't be super mad at us. We like King Kongbo. Please make the nickname King Kongbo. And don't call him King Kong. That's lazy. Now, you know, and man, Tennessee really did have a good day. They had a good day before, too, with Tyler Burr. That was huge, as predicted by yours truly. Right. And, uh, and, him over. and, and Nigel Warrior, uh, which we watched a very awkward live feed of with at least nine to ten minutes of <sighs> nothing happening. They're going to do well in Florida going forward. You think so? Yeah, I think Scott will have some pull in that Central Florida area. I, I think that that bird thing might have just been like a warning shot. We'll yeah. see. Warning shot. Take that, Southwest Florida. We know Bill Kramer, as we were pulling up my archives earlier, represents for all Southwest Florida. So, uh, all right. Now, Ole Miss, our most loyal fan base, all of a sudden, uh, accounting for one third of our streams last week of our podcast. So, big shout to you guys, uh, Ole Miss, as we like to refer to you, Nick and I, at least. <laughs> Uh, A.J. Brown, you mentioned how much we love the bad boys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he did the unthinkable. He, at Starkville High School, called an announcement, said, you know what, this isn't just for the students. Let's bring some of the town's people in here. <laughs> and then just crapped on him. You know, wouldn't it have been even better if he would have, like, want full wrestling heel and been like, ever since the day I started playing football, I've been wanting to get out of this hell hole. <laughs> just, like, ripped oh. it to shreds. Well, so, I don't know if it's a hell hole. I've not been to Starkville. Um, uh, I've been to Starkville, and but I know it does have a certain reputation. I mean, there, there's not a lot of ho hotel rooms available at the, the Hilton family of, of hotels. I can tell you that much. What were you gonna say, Nick? Uh, you're not quick to defend the hellhole status on, on Starkville. Uh, <laughs> you know, as much as I enjoyed sleeping at the floor of a of a of a motel where the door was on the outside. Oh I, no! <laughs> I can't. And since I know the Ole Miss fans are the only ones who listen to this podcast, and not Mississippi State, they'll probably take our side on that one. No, nah, the Mississippi State listen, people listen now. I got news for you. When I go to Greece, mm. uh, I'm wandering around this village with 200 people. You know what the only sound is I hear at night? The clanging of cows. The cowbells of the cows roaming the streets of this remote village. Sounds and like Starkville. Yeah, <laughs> and so when you're when you go to the cowbell. And when you say, like, a cow town is generally viewed as a... Sure. Well, anyway, I wish he would have healed off a little bit more on the town and the people. But A.J. Brown was a, was a huge get. Like I said, you know, him and Metcalf. We talked about it yesterday on the uh, video show. We love him. And then... And the way they work together, too. It's interesting. They're so different. I mean, it gives you two <laughs> very, very different wide receivers that can do... Between the two of them, they can do almost anything. Well, and before we went to Alabama, Mississippi, you know, I... Of course, we work together in the Southeast. We argue about stuff. I really was pounding the A.J. Brown drum because you hadn't had a chance to see him yet. Yeah. And I was like, Rob, we got to move this kid up. Like, he's awesome. And be it was because I saw the game where they played against each other. And unlike Hardman and Robertson, they both A.J. Bra no, <laughs> Brown, no, Brown played defense. And so did our boy uh, Metcalf. And it was not even close. It was an A.J. Brown victory 
on offense, getting open against Metcalf, and then covering. Well, Metcalf just isn't built for that. Right. Well, no, but I'm <laughs> I mean, saying. This is just, I'm just, he's a different kind of wide receiver. I'm saying, but he was still covered by, Brown could cover him, too. Um, and we saw him, we saw Brown, I think, my favorite play of the week of practice at Albany, Mississippi, was Nigel not going against Brown, and Brown sort of jumping up and, like, reaching over him and just like, plucking. I think that our boy DeKalen is going to be a high volume, catch a bunch of balls every game, over the middle possession, dude, and I think you're going to see he'll catch more balls than Brown. But I think you're going to see Brown with these big plays and the big yardage totals and the highlights. Uh, and you know, I think they'll both figure in. It's going to be real interesting, though. Well, they had the they had the video of uh, Deontay Anderson jumping out of the plane, which everyone that kind of was the closest we had to any sort of crossover. Yeah, I never even saw it. I didn't watch it either. But so if I didn't see it, there's no way USA Today. Well, the, yeah, the morning American. Well, the, saw ki- it. the kids in here were were impressed by it. So that means that younger, we had a couple 2017 four stars doing an interview with us yesterday, and they 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 said that you know that was Fi. Fi. So, although Lee Anthony Williams said he skipped to the end. He's like, I just skipped to the end to see him jump out the plane. Like, <laughs> All right then. <laughs> So, uh, so Ole Miss definitely, I would say they, they get an A from us. They missed on Jeffrey Simmons, which hurt, which I think we... Had me fooled. Yeah, we all thought he was going there because I think we even did a video where we sort of alluded that, like, well, any minute yeah, now. Yeah, and, and then they were, yeah, any minute he'll be committing to Ole Miss. And then the video ran after he committed. Right. And made me look real dumb. Did we take any guff for that? No, I don't yeah. think so. So, um, so they, get a, they get a win. We're a big we're a big fan of you guys, Ole Miss. Um, at least with what they were able to do in the recruiting class, and the the followers we get on Twitter, right? I, I would say Ole Miss is some of the nicest. Yeah, they don't curse at me as much. Uh, I mean, I they know. haven't accused me of producing the worst ranking in the history of Rivals.com yet. And they, <laughs> you know, with, having, with that Auburn fan the other day that told me, "Hope's not, lost. I hope you lose your job." <laughs> really? Yeah. Over what? Uh, I can't even. Oh. What was it? Oh, it's because he, I wasn't mad enough. When I tweeted it, it was when the Saban thing happened, uh, when they oh, dropped Riley Cole. About him dropping so I, w- I was like, well, you know, I wasn't mad at Harbaugh for doing it, and I wasn't mad at Saban for doing it. And I said, you know, this t- tends to happen sometimes. And this Auburn fan was furious at me that I wasn't furious enough at Saban and then told me that he hopes he lost my job. I lose my job. And then also cursed at me a bunch and called me fat. <laughs> so, you know, that was great. Well, at least you, you know, oh, never mind. I was going to make a, a joke that's not appropriate. So, uh, moving on, <laughs> moving on before I say something. I made, like, I made it through the whole day yesterday without saying anything stupid. That's okay. good. So, uh, Georgia, we, we talked a little bit of them when we were talking about Tennessee, ups and downs. Derek Brown had to sting to not land him. But, I mean, I think we said, did we, I don't know if we did rapid fire on them or if we did some guys, but I said, I said Derek Brown was going to Auburn. I also I, said Derek yeah, Brown was I think you picked that based on what what, what we had heard. Um, but it's still it's still tough because they had him in there, and it just we mentioned this a little bit with the media coverage from like I said, non recruiting medias tend to make it seem like these kids are going to Georgia, uh, even if they're not. So it was a letdown for the fans. And I think part of that is, and we've talked about this on the podcast before, local media that cover a specific school or cluster of schools may get information from one coaching staff. And right, like right. I say all the time, every coaching staff will tell you that they are getting every kid right, until right. they're not. Well, and, and yeah, and, and you know, people were confident that they were getting them. Even the people I talked to on that side of the, luckily we have the advantage of, you know, we can talk to people in Auburn yeah, that we, can, we know. That's how we find out that our boy King Kongbo committed to 30 schools. Right, that's why exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's why we thought King Kongbo was going everywhere. So. I don't want to harp too much on the negative stuff with Georgia, but I think it hurt when Kirby Smart got the job. I think Derek kind of felt like he wasn't feeling the love. It wasn't even, made a priority. Right, and even though, and actually Sam Bruce told me the same thing on Mark Richt, which was interesting because he ended up, he was like, man, why he didn't call me for a week, you know? Like, yeah. He's like, finally I just, he, he said I, w- I did the adult thing and I called him. Like, he was acting <laughs> like he was yeah. more mature than Mark Rick, which I, <laughs> I thought was interesting. Yeah, it, while he's wearing his reflective sunglasses yeah, that yeah. he wears. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, we used to have a guy who worked here who liked to wear those mirrored sunglasses, I remember. It's making me uncomfortable. What's it's like, weird? Which is the recru- makes me like, harken back to you being like the Terminator. The recruits, the, didn't, I remember them recruits specifically complaining that they didn't like that the guy wore them when he interviewed people. So it's sure. weird that Sam then wears them. He's hated blockers. Um, EJ Price stung escapes. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was a shock. That was a big. That was the first one, and I, I wasn't. I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't close to his recruitment at all. Uh, I didn't have an inside source. I didn't. So you know, our USC site was telling me 
you know, we, you know, we're hearing they're going to get him. But and I think you and I both were kind of like, especially some other Southeast players, we were like, yeah, yeah, of course. Every kid says they're going to go. Yeah. Like, West. like every kid tells us they're visiting Oregon officially. <laughs> yeah, and like and never, never goes Two to of them have ever done it, you know what I mean? So, uh, but the, the wins for Georgia that I think, of course, we, we, t- we spoke a little bit about Hardman earlier in the show. I, I kind of think that can't be undersold. It's, it, I don't think it gets the buzz because we knew, knew it was going to yeah. happen, but a versatile guy. And I think, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how that offense looks because it's going to be pro style, but I think they're going to find a way to get in the ball. I think, like I said, when we talked about warning shots earlier, I think that this was a solid class. I think that next year is going to be better now that he has a full cycle. Um, he's got some connections. He's proven that. He did pretty well for taking over late in the game. And I think it'll get better. I mean, I think this is a, a staff that can compete for SEC titles and recruiting anyway. And I wrote about it in the, the piece I have coming out uh, on Friday, I think, about the 2017 storylines. I think they should have a top five class. Nate McBride. I would say is, is probably likely to go with them because he loved Kirby at Alabama, uh, and he's a Georgia boy. He's from Vidalia. You ever eat the onions? <laughs> That's where he's from. Uh, I went down there to see him actually on our way to see Richard LeCount, who's already in the class, my nephew, <laughs> <laughs> who Nick and I have basically changed his diapers. It seems <laughs> like we've been covering his recruitment so long. Jaden Hunter, who uh, Nick did the video on, which. Bravo! I think we still got a lot of uh, got a lot of love. I think on all types of so- social you're, you're media. You're feeling the love. Yeah, the kids liked it. I know, you know, some people were wondering who did it. So <laughs> we'd like the record to show. Me, that's who. Me, that, <laughs> <laughs> that it was Nick. So uh, and then a few other guys. Those guys I mentioned, not McBride because he's kind of. He's out on a tractor somewhere, plowing, you know, plowing <laughs> a field. I mean, he's, he's doing. A, he's as country as it gets. He's on the might. Might wear it, might bring in a dip to media day <sighs> watch that Rob likes, um, but anyway, those guys are all friends. I mean, Jaden Hunter, uh, Malik Herring, who's a guy we had at the five star challenge. I think it's only a matter of time before he commits. Richards in the fold, and there's a lot of that. You can feel that 2017 buzz. Yeah, and the only thing that can kill it is if they fall flat in the fall. Right, they'd have to have a bad season. But even so, if you have say they say they start out, to, I don't know what their schedules like. And say they start out two and two with. Uh, the other quarterback in there, and Eason comes in and shows. Yeah, I mean, yeah, flashes. there's a lot, a lot can go well. I think I think they're gonna do fine. And people love Kirby. Nick and I actually bumped into Kirby. Uh, the bump rule was in effect, and I think he was he was pretty cool to both of us. Didn't he say? I mean, I mean, he didn't talk to me. Okay, well, but I didn't make the effort. He knows he knows where his bread is buttered. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, and I expect to be seeing him plenty. of, you know, uh, we see these coaches every now and again. We go to the mm-hmm. camps. Uh, Nick and I have sworn to never go to dog night again so unless, unless kirby's waiting there with a sandwich for me i can't i might go i was gonna go last year i had something no 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 no. you're not allowed to go either i mean uh, the, 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 i can tell you that dog night uh was a f- i'm not allowed to go what <laughs> no, uh, now you have to expand uh, i mean there was all sorts of issues with Oh, I get, like i would melt down whether, because it's such yeah a whether we should be you know whether we were allowed to be there and you know, the, the, uh, and for people who don't know, well, Nick can talk about it a little bit. Just that there was too many kids It's, it's there. too many kids. There's no way to identify the kids that are there. The practice facilities that they use to host the camp, the lighting is not ideal. Oh, yeah, it's, it's like, dark once it get, Once yeah, it gets yeah. dark, you can't. So you can't, you really can't tell who's the par- The parents are everywhere in everybody's way trying to watch their kids, which, which there's, there's like yeah. 750 of. Right, that they're allowed to do. So we've seen a lot of these schools do, and this is something we'll talk about in the off-season podcast when we're more sure. b- bored. You know, some co- some schools have a way that they do these invite-only camps, which yeah. I'm which, a big fan of. I think South Carolina did one one year where actually Hardman was there, uh, our boy Randricus was there, all, all the, you know, a lot of these 2017 four-star guys like Lee Anthony Williams and them, they were out there working out, and there was 30 to 50 kids there, no parents, just some media, you know what I mean? So it's, and, you know, Auburn is, it, you know, kind of kind of uh, goes out of a way to make theirs a little more media-friendly, and yeah, it's not, nothing gets to it. They don't. You know who runs the best camp? Who? UCLA. It's amazing. Mm. I mean, they, they, stand, they hand you rosters. You're allowed to, like, walk on the field. <laughs> I mean, it's well, really great. I'm not sure if they're allowed to hand us rosters. <laughs> no, no, no. Here's the thing. <laughs> the they do, when they do do it, I, can, I was talking to the coaching staff there, they take the secondary violation every year. Oh, really? They just self-report to, it, oh, and then they do to, it anyway. Just to be media-friendly. Yeah. Well, Alabama doesn't, doesn't let you go at all. So, I mean, 
you know, props to Georgia for letting us in, but the problem is, you know, I heard from a lot of, there was a lot of parents, and it was like, actually Nate McBride's dad was there talking to me, and, and uh, we got yelled, he and I both got yelled at by a Georgia compliance <laughs> which, you know, I don't think uh, he was very happy about at the time, but he got over it now. It was just, it was a situation where, and some of the guys who brought a lot of players, especially from out of state, the, Flo the group of Florida guys with, I think, Burns and Victor and those guys weren't, super thrilled because they bought some second tier guys that they thought were going to get looks from and the staff and it didn't go well. So, you know, that staff is gone. I'll be able to see how, how Kirby handles dog night. But, uh, you know, so I think I think a lot of guys will be jumping in the fold for 2017. Um, you know, we mentioned a lot of lying. <laughs> a lot of lying. <laughs> a lot of lying going on yesterday. One of the things that I would say, I don't know if it's a complete lie, maybe an exaggeration of the truth. We saw Shavar Manuel flip to Florida State from Florida, and I saw some reports floating around that he flipped two weeks ago, and they were keeping it secret. I think, I, I didn't really read through the whole thing <coughs> because it was a tough read, but um, that they were doing it as some sort of payback for Nick, Nick Kruger's favorite Jacksonville Jaguar. Uh, I just, I mean. Dante Fowler, when he um, flipped <laughs> on signing day, and it was like, but I mean, the coaching staff yeah, are the same. Hey, Shavar Manuel. We need you to be a pawn in this scheme for a petty payback operation. That has nothing to do, <laughs> that has with, nothing you. To do with you. So just chill. Yeah. Come I, on. I, I don't believe <laughs> that. I mean, if, if you're Shavar and somebody tells you that, you're just like, oh, okay, coach. Right. I think it was a good, I think it was a, I think it was a, you know, great. It's a way to jab your rival. You flip sure, you a guy they wanted on signing day that, that you could have had. By the way, Florida State, when did we th think he committed at that camp? Remember, you were on, you were on campus. Yeah. Warchant reported he committed because I think he did silently. Really? And then he pulled back. Right. Once Florida State said, look, we want you to decommit, stay decommitted, lure Florida in. <laughs> yeah. Once they, once they hatched this, <laughs> this master plan. We wanted to lure Florida in catfish style and then hammer him. Yep. And Shavar's like, all right. If we could only had a camera on Jeez. McElwain's face. When he, I mean, come on. You know what I mean? So, I mean? These are not things that happen in reality. Like this, I, I, can't, I can't imagine. <laughs> So, <laughs> it's, would you tell Shavar? Would you be like, all right, let's just trick this kid into carrying out our deed? Right. Ex you know exactly. So, I don't know which one's weirder. Right. So uh, we don't we ahead. don't buy that story at all. We talked about on the video show about how we don't buy we don't buy Texas's. We oh, were, God. we didn't want other schools to recruit these guys who we didn't want them to. Yeah, go I mean, public. I understand why they told him not to commit until signing day was to get headlines, but for Charlie Strong to insinuate that. If they committed to Texas, other schools would come after them harder. It's not like these were undiscovered gems hiding out in the Congo. There were four stars, like rivals 250 players. People are going to recruit them anyway, right. Charlie. <laughs> You're yeah. not hiding them. The Jonathan Congo? Uh, no. <laughs> King, Jonathan King Congo. <laughs> um, so anyway, but getting back to Florida State's class a little bit, I think we should talk specifically about that. We like, I mean, Manuel was a guy that I, I think... Nick and I were at the camp, uh, and Nick, you probably don't even remember him. Byron Cowart was there. It was Byron's headed into his, it was after his junior year. He had no offers. He was our, eventually ended up our number one player. He won the MVP and was, uh, was a Nick Kruger. I mean, oh, no, that was after Byron's sophomore year. He was a Nick Kruger favorite in line, but I, Nick was like, who? who Shavar? Is, no, Byron. Byron. And at that camp, Shavar was there, and there was a lot of similarities between him and Byron physically and the way they performed. Shavar was a dominant defensive end at that time. He transfers to IMG, which was which is weird. Was his ability to carry out sinister schemes apparent that day, or did that uh, well, later? You know, he did skip the rivals camp in 2015. Most so, yeah, so maybe it wasn't payback. part of his ploy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For not being because he started out like as the number three player initially. I think he was yeah yeah super super high, um, and then he went to IMG, and I don't know if he struggled with injuries or what happened, but. He got hurt a little bit. He put on some real bad He wasn't bad even starting, He right? was splitting time, splitting reps. Uh, really, just, I mean, and you talk to him, he admits it. So it's not a shot at Shavar. He's just, just happened. He just got fatter and slower. Oh, and he's taking like. some of it off, though. Um, we saw him in All-Star season. He looked, he looked, really yeah, good, he looked right? he's, looks like he's getting back to the Shavar of old, so he's on the right trajectory anyway. And we've seen what he is when he is at his best. Uh, when Shavar is his best Shavar, he's really something to behold. And I think him actually doing as well as he did during the All-Star season helped get Florida State maybe to put on the press a little more. Mm -hmm. so, a, uh, maybe the weight gain was part of the sinister plan. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right? Wow. Like, they, they beefed him up so it would look 
Like, you know, give Florida a chance to come in was and snatch a, him. Like, Tyra, we dropped him. Was it a Tyra Banks style fat I, suit? I, even? It, wasn't even... <laughs> it might not even have been real weight. <laughs> I was going to say, this is like for a, for a movie role when actors put on. And oh, yeah. Ready. Give him an Oscar. Amazing. Real Jim Caviezel ass. Shavar's going to eat got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shavar, who, who Rob made a, a deal with at one point, right? Yeah, yeah, we had a deal. Shavar and I, and he stuck to it. I mean, he was called me the day he committed. Uh, Shavar hates the media. Uh, once somebody okay. once told you that my boy Shavar moves in silence was the quote. He doesn't talk to anybody anyway. So I made a deal with Shavar pretty early on that I would never call him except on the day he committed and that he'd better answer. And sure enough, I held to my end of the deal, Shavar held to his, and he's a man of his word. Yeah. He may be a sinister pot carrying out dude, but he's also, his handshake is as strong as oak. I, w I wanted to ask though too about, um, obviously he had committed, the, the two commitments came within uh, close proximity of each other. Didn't the same thing happen with Eric Fowler? Didn't he just commit to LSU yeah, like last week and then flip? His was even closer, yeah. I think Shavar committed right after the Under Armour game, I think he was like on the field or something. He committed. Right? Fowler is also a confirmed evil genius. Fowler committed to LSU and then flipped to Texas. He's from Texas, though, right? Was he? What you're saying was he a schemer? Did he commit to <laughs> yeah. LSU? It's confirmed evil genius. It's, it seems similar. And Texas is, you know, there's a lot of crossover in that, you know, that eastern part of of Ooh. Texas between LSU fans and uh, right, absolutely. He forgot wow. the fat suit. It's a, it's 2016 will go down as a class, the year of the troll. <laughs> yeah, uh, we should do an all we should do an all troll team. We, we should do a podcast. I can invent so many recruiting conspiracy theories. I'm really good at this. I we see should, why the fans okay. are good at this. Okay, we will do that in the off season. How about an all conspiracy theory podcast? Because we could we could talk about some of the rumors we've heard. Yeah, that'd be fun. I got coaches who switched schools at the last minute. Yeah, uh, that would be fun. We will do that in the off season. Okay, put that down on. Mm -hmm. Let me write. I do have a computer in front of me, but it only has the rundown. And the Rivals.com team rankings, not presented presented by Under Armour, I was going to say, but Under Armour presents the Rivals 250 50. and the Rivals 100. All right, what's next on the docket? Woodman? Okay, um, we mentioned the televised announcements. And <laughs> uh, the one I really want to talk about, and we'll, we'll have a big Michigan segment here, because Michigan, another, not in the southeast, but they, they really love us. Um, they do. Rashawn Gary committed... And really, looked I mean, like somebody strangled his dog. Yeah, I mean, it was really talk about. I don't know if blase is even the word to describe it. I think that was. It seemed my, like my the, best guess. That is ESPN set him up for failure there. That's a sterile environment. You bring him into a studio. You only let like a couple of his family members come, and then he announces into a camera with a blank like canvas in front of him. Yeah, yeah. When you're nope. <laughs> that's what people don't realize. It a lot of times you think like, hey, I'm in a TV studio, and you assume there's it's like a movie set, and there's people yeah. running around. It's a robotic camera, and it does. They don't look like cameras. Yeah. People think that they look like in the movies, and it's, no, it's a square with a little thing on the top, and it's a teleprompter. Yeah, you're just sitting there in front of it, staring at it, and of course it's awkward, especially right. for a 17 year old kid. So what's Gary gonna do? Like, I mean, he's not. Uh, a trained interviewer at this point. He hasn't undergone media training. And they're just peppering him with these questions and he's giving one word answers and the whole time looking like he would rather be literally anywhere else. Well, what's weird is Gary is a quiet kid. I think I actually noted that in the, when I saw him at Under Armour and he was all of a sudden yelling at Greg Little and barking mm -hmm. a little bit. Nick and I were there watching the the one-on-ones when he was doing that and I was really entertained by that because once again, I love trash talk. But then he came here to town last Thursday, and it was a press conference situation with multiple reporters, and he was at a table off to the front, and we actually, I shot the video, uh, and we, the whole video is up on our website, and he seemed pretty comfortable there. I mean, he wasn't smart. I guess he wasn't really joking around. If you are engaged with a face-to-face -face with a person in a crowd. Yeah, I guess you're talking about the person in your ear, maybe. It's easier than to speak as a 17-year-old kid in an empty room to a headless voice. <laughs> I mean, they set him up to fail. Well, that was just a mess. Uncomfortable, man. I would rather watch Meet the Parents, which is the most uncomfortable movie, and I hate it, was than it, watch that. <laughs> was, it, was it Tessator doing the... Uh, yeah, but here's what I was going to explain to the listening audience at home. People think ESPN is ESPN. It's all in Connecticut. Gary came to the Connecticut studios, which is why he did it on SportsCenter, the coverage we're watching on TV all day on ESPNU, ESPN2, is from Charlotte, where yeah. the ESPNU is headquartered. So Tessator, uh, 
friend of the show, Tom Luganbill. Uh, <laughs> Professional with, hip evaluator, Tom, uh, Tom with, Luganbill. Uh, you know, we love Tom Luganbill's dad, who we work with, uh, old Al Luganbill. He's great. Yeah. Starting in a couple of weeks, we'll be hanging out with him all the time. He'll be coaching up the rivals. He'll camps. be calling me names, using mm -hmm. a lot of cuss words at six o'clock. Right, running right around a golf cart and flipping me off. <laughs> uh, we love Coach Luganbill. He's he, the best uh, man. He is the best. Former NFL and college coach, recruited a lot of players. Um, but but there so it was via satellite. So Rashawn's got the headset in. He's in Bristol. Tessator is down in Charlotte. Charlotte. So I think if you watched it on ESPN, it might have like on actual ESPN, the the mothership, it might have been a little better. But it was still the same video feed, and it still because you notice remember that we were trying to get some quotes off the TV, and they cut quickly out of it. Yeah, it, and then you kind of heard him talking a little bit. That was him talking. To whoever was hosting Sports Center, so that's a little bit of I guess I mean, it's a little inside baseball talk, but that might explain a little bit too. Of, <laughs> Man, but it was uncomfortable. Well, the other thing too, I wanted to say, you know, our boy Tessator did a good job of, of running the show, but when he was talking to the recruits, I mean, it was kind of like well, you're I mean, he was really like <laughs> well, when that kid com com committed to Auburn, and he was like, let me be the first to say. War Eagle. Yeah, it was really. Yeah. I mean, but you're setting, you're setting him up to fail too because you're rolling. You're rolling this jobber in there who's never covered recruiting and been like, all right, talk to these kids well, about recruiting. And Tessator is, you know, he's good. He that he does have a interesting delivery. Like, you know, he. he <laughs> I forget. Be the first I for, to say he's real stern. Eagle. I forget what the impression I did of him afterwards was. But anyway, so so Joe, like you said, he's parachuting in. Yeah, I mean, he he. I'm sure he did a lot of research, but at the same time, you don't. It's hard to research. Guess what? It's stuff, not yeah. only hard to research. It's hard to talk to teenagers. Yeah, yeah, especially if you don't know them. I mean, in any, and then especially not face. Imagine if they put you on the phone with a teenage kid you don't know. Yeah, you're like, no doubt. Hey, bro. And they told you one thing about them or two things. They play football, and he just decided he's going to Michigan. Hey, the only thing you can say in that situation is, let me be the first to say, go Big Blue or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> War Eagle. Let me be the first to say, War Eagle. Yeah, it was definitely, and the kid was like, all right, all right then. I mean, ki <laughs> these kids are like, these kids are, don't care who they're talking to, what's going on. I mean, sometimes, you know, Rob and I joke with them a lot, and some of them love it. You know, we mentioned our boy Richard LeCount earlier. Sam Mac Bruce loves it Sam while I Bruce, give him crap. Mac, Mac Jones, a 2017 but quarterback. This is, this is a true story. On the other end of that spectrum is a prospect that I won't name that's committed to an SEC school. And I was messing around with him early in the season. We're trying to get him to a rivals camp. Ah, oh, that's right. I rescheduled him because he couldn't attend the one in Orlando, so I tried to, which was closer to his home. And I tried to send him to Miami. And he was like, oh, yeah, look at my schedule. And I was just joking around. I was like, you're scared of South Florida players, aren't you? Never talk to me again. Yeah, he, he did not like <laughs> Just that. peaced out. Well, that was the end of our relationship. I met, a, I met a kid, and actually, I think Nick was there for this awkward, really awkward uh, exchange. When I when I said, "Oh, you're the fat, you're the really fast kid," everyone's been talking about. He's like, "Yeah, that's right, four three. And I was like, "I was like, oh yeah, who was running that stopwatch? Your mom." <laughs> That could be that could be misconstrued not as like a, a beneficial stopwatch taker, just as like a your mom joke. Right. Mm -hmm. My it. Fitbit is synced up to. Oh, I thought that was your phone. Yep. No, it's my phone. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I know how many calories you burned today. Yeah. In the day. Well, Rob did help me move some boxes earlier today, Absolutely. so big shout to him for that. But anyway, it was it was a multi layered. It was your mom joke, and it was a. Oh. The Times probably not accurate joke. Absolutely. And based on the way that player has panned out in college, I would say. <laughs> Mom was running the <laughs> stop yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, that was maybe toe. I do toe the line a little bit. So anyway, back to Michigan. D guess what? I don't care if the kid looked like he was miserable or not. You just got the number one player. Be very happy. I like some of the shots that we saw on Twitter. Jeff Scott take a little jab. And you was, know what the worst shot was that didn't get any real play is after Michigan did their whole signing day event with Jeter and they had Ric Flair there, one of the coaches at Ohio State at their signing day event made a comment about how they didn't bring in a 70-year-old fake wrestler. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. yeah, shots man, yeah, you can't Ric take, yeah, you can't fire shots at Ric Flair. He's I a mean, real wrestler. Absolutely. I mean, I'll tell you what's fake is that other stuff that they do where they put on helmets and wrestle in the ring with no ropes. There's not even any entrance music. How can that be? I mean, I mean they do it in the Olympics. I mean, how can it be real if there's not even any steel chairs? Well, it's not. First of all, it's not. They're not helmets. They're just to protect your ears. Yeah, whatever they are, it's fake wrestling. Take it from me, Woody Womack, uh, accomplished high school wrestler, actually never won a match. <laughs> it's because you didn't have a manager. Well, it's because, <laughs> guess what, if I was cutting promos, I would have been undefeated in yeah, high I school. If I, I were you, I would have joined a high school wrestling stable. Well, no, the, our football coach actually had, had made us, 
if we wanted to play football, you had this was before the kids just played football year round. Yeah. You had to do wrestling, and I. You should have just told me you're going to do backyard wrestling. You, <laughs> you, want, you want to talk <laughs> about it? You want to talk about it? Uh, sad sight. Me and one of those. You know, I'm no, I'm no AC Slater when it comes to wearing that wrestling. Yeah, if outfit. you were in the WWE, they'd put you in like the Big Show slash Andre the Giant one strap. Singular. Yeah, yeah. Give me a one strapper. Yeah. Was, we we've covered our share of high school wrestling events uh, back in previous oh, jobs, geez. and a lot of those kids don't wear jocks or cups or anything like that. And you're sitting there watching them in the aforementioned onesies, yeah, boy. all day <laughs> long. Not a lot to the imagination there. I'm for yeah. So 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 that was. Let's talk a little about that show too. It's so weird how. Do you think that the reaction of people ripping on Harbaugh is making it him want to do more? Because I know if you Oh, I would too. Taking from my personality and your personality where we like when people come at us like that or we or it just makes us act more outlandish. Why are people mad about it? I, I cannot, like, I try to always measure everybody's motivation. It's either A, they're mad that he's landing kids. B, they're mad because it's happening in the Midwest. C, they think, they can't, it can't, honestly be about what is this world becoming? I mean, that, that, that can't happen. Nobody really thinks of that. That having Ric Flair and Derek Jeter at a signing day event is the sign of the decline of society or something. And so I don't understand. I don't understand why people are mad. I Guys, just don't. listen, it's fun. It's fun. It doesn't matter. This is all fun. Yeah, college football, guess what? Not working in the mines. Right, yeah. We don't, <laughs> I mean, it's that serious all the time, man. We don't, we don't know. We don't know if these kids are going to pan out. People say it all the time. I mean, we did a ton. They might, they might not. Either way. Right. This is their day. Let them have fun. Whatever. Let them jump out of a plane. Yeah. You know, helicopter, as Nick has been talked to. I got news for you. If I'm a college coach and my, and my, my recruit says he's announcing by jumping out of a plane, I'm saying, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> <That's laughs> <That's true. laughs> Bro. <laughs> Well, so yesterday, to put it in perspective, uh, we mentioned you and I do have some probably more interesting interactions with the kids than I'd say a lot of our colleagues. I know I do, for sure, because there's a little bit of It's amazing what happens when you talk to people like human beings. Well, so we had, <laughs> we had some four stars in here yesterday for the signing day show. Uh, we ended up playing foosball. <laughs> we played foosball. <laughs> Ping pong. We played foosball. We had a bunch of free candy that we, that we have here at Yahoo for everybody. Uh, I rode the Razor scooter around and yes, you did. put it on Snapchat. And then we played Office Chair Ping Pong, which is my next new favorite game by far, which we will probably be playing uh, <laughs> after this. And guess what? It was fun. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't, I wasn't doing it. I'm not recruiting the kid. Yeah. It's more fun to have fun doing stuff than having them sit here and asking them about the 4-3 and how they fit in their cover two. You right. know what I mean? It's just... So Michigan fans, we got your back. Other fans who are angry, you guys are losers. <laughs> <laughs> you can email. That way. Uh, so anyway, we had a good time with. Uh, we had a good time. I think we anybody's had... watching this on YouTube, and then like you know, you see the hard cut. We're just in a different position, <laughs> coming out of a laugh. That's when you know it got cut. You cut, yeah. Yeah, things got cut. We got we got Rob. Rob is on probation uh, for having cuts out of the podcast. <laughs> so that's it. No more talk out of you. Um, so so real quick, let's do some plugs. Uh, if you want to. Complain to Rob about how he should be fired because he wasn't hard enough on Nick Saban. What's your hit Twitter handle, Rob? Uh, at Cassidy underscore Rob. This is uh, at Rivals Krug City, uh, which, you know, interestingly enough, Nick, I think we should talk about this just for a second. We recently transitioned from using the Yahoo player to using YouTube for a lot of our video needs. So now all the videos you do that were free before to everyone, but maybe people didn't get to see as much. They're all on YouTube, so you just tell them what's on your Twitter account and what the kind of stuff you guys are doing, real quick. Well, <laughs> there's no there's no short way to explain what we're doing video wise. Ba basically, any any free content uh, video that, that we do goes like on this video. Like this video would go on the YouTube account, which you can also subscribe to on YouTube, like it was anybody else's channel. Anything that would have been formerly considered premium video content is uploaded through Vimeo and then plugged into a, a premium content item on Rivals.com. So. I'll tweet out all the links to every video that I make um, regardless. And if you're a subscriber, you can get to the stuff that's on Rivals that's uploaded through Vimeo. Otherwise, um, you can always check out, check out YouTube. We're trying to uh, expand you know, the business model through YouTube as well. So the more subscribers we can get there, the better. And uh, I believe this podcast, with or without video attached to it, still goes up on the YouTube channel as well, too. Yeah, so. that's right. Most of the time, it's not going to be us talking. Nick and I, 
We might try to work something out where we just put Rob's face. Uh, <laughs> yeah. To clarify, I am also a fat loser. We so. should put you up here. <laughs> fit, fit the... We should put you on this screen. And then, yeah, uh, no doubt. Every week it would just be your fat loser face. I need to uh, also, the reason that Mississippi, there was the first draft of this document had no Mississippi. I had to send it back and tell them to add Mississippi because that's how much we love yeah, that I'd, state. Actually, it's also missing my state, which is Kentucky, Kentucky yeah. uh, which is up there. See? Yeah, you should have sent it back. But that's, that's cool. I mean... You know, Kentucky hates us enough after your rant against uh, chewing well, tobacco. See, that's the thing. It wasn't about Kentucky. It was about chewing tobacco. If Kentucky identifies itself with chewing tobacco, that's well, on Kentucky, bro. they got bro. mad at Nick for putting in the bluegrass music, which <laughs> is bluegrass. It's the bluegrass it's state. state. Yeah. So, real quick, more promotions. You can follow me at Rivals Woody. Uh, we have the podcast account at Rivals Podcast. There might be more podcasts coming down the tube, I think, from the Rivals Network, which we're still working on. Uh, and they won't. They won't be as good because I'm not going to be producing. <laughs> they'll, they'll all be hosted by. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were, We already checked that box on this show. <laughs> so <laughs> um, just like us. Um, and then subscribe on iTunes. If you're listening on iTunes, please subscribe. Uh, we, we've hit us. We've hit a stalemate on our iTunes reviews. Things have slowed down. We're stuck at 30. You need to get sent out to list serve to the fraternity. Yep. Again. <laughs> Get them back up. Uh, so, so give us a review on iTunes, and more importantly, subscribe. Send it to your friends. I have a lot of podcasts that I listen to. That's the only way to do it. So, uh, real quick, I think we we kind of wanted to talk about some. Are we, are we running late? We running long? Oh no, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, let's go to rants and recommendations then. We, okay. We can. This last last thing is watch. That, that's when the music starts. Pressing magic. Yeah, there's no button. There. <laughs> so an interesting week for us. I guess all three of us will try to try to hit them. I didn't take any notes. So uh, who has one first? I've got a recommendation. Does somebody want to start with a rant? No. Go ahead. I want to recommend the website Vocative, which is a new news site that does a bunch of different things. But I think it's mostly centered around reporting on the dark net. So it has hired good writers and good reporters, and also a bunch of nerds that surf the dark software that surf the dark net and kind of report on trends on what's happening down there and it's it can be a little sketchy but it's stuff that doesn't really goes unreported a lot of times because you know a lot of people don't that's why it's the dark net <laughs> is because they're trying to stay out of headlines uh, and this this company has started a site it's not the whole vision of the site just to report on that but it's a big part they also do some sports stuff and some other society stuff and the uh, deputy editor there is the old deputy editor at Jezebel and Gloria Ryan who is uh, brilliant. Now we know how you ended up on the side. Well, I the do truth it. comes <laughs> no, out. No, like, I think she's great. This I, was not discussed off air. I think I think the world of her work, um, and <laughs> I, I just do. Uh, and geez. so I'm happy that she's there, and she's aligned herself with other good writers. Yeah, Rob is a big fan of uh, this aforementioned uh, editor, so I am. take that with a grain of salt as you bake this. <laughs> Man, you guys are the worst. <laughs> so I didn't say anything. No, skip me. Guess what? i got a few different rants. There we go. And they're cool. Actually, I can, tie these, I can tie these two in together. Yesterday, you, you actually canceled a lot of your media appearances because we were trying to do the show in mm -hmm. here, uh, and we wanted to save all our talking for ourselves. I did a ton yesterday because I was trying. I told every single station, number one, to mention that we we're doing the video show, and none of them did so, including one time I just... I was like, all right, well, that's it for Woody, and I just... Cut him off? No, I just cut him off and said, nice. guys, the reason I'm on here is to promote the stuff I'm doing, you know what I mean? You're not, guess what, when we appear on radio shows, we don't get paid, spoiler oh, yeah. alert. I mean, it's part of our job, but it's not something that we have to do. Absolutely. Actually, my contract says it has to be approved each time. I've never sent it to a right. well, so, Actually, once I did. Well, Sean, actually, our PR team, Sean Hamill, big shout. Uh, our pal. Really great guy. Yeah, we hang out with sometimes. I'm gonna actually send him this podcast now, and maybe he'll send it out to some people, so yeah, we gave him a big shout. Um, and hey, he could help us book guests too, Sean. If you're listening, Sean's yeah. A, hey, Sean, buddy. <laughs> Sean is a eight four three area code. I think he's a big Clemson fan, so uh, I'm sure he was all over. But so he he set up a lot of appearances for me. And every one of these I do. Number one, ninety percent of them, the people aren't prepared and have no specific questions, Man. and they throw stuff at you like, you know, Rob, we know about the big guys, but tell us about one under the radar player that it, like. And, when they ask about underrated players. Right, and I'm like, guys, like, you know, come on now. We, let's talk about the big storylines, get in, get out. Number two is the Christmas Day question, which we talked about <laughs> off the air, and I think everyone could complain <laughs> about it. Everyone's like, this must be like Christmas Day for you. And yeah. It's like... <clears throat> if I had to work. 
Yeah, this is day. not Christmas Day. I'm at, if, yeah, if you're Santa Claus and you start working at, <laughs> at you know at midnight yes. and you got to travel all the way around the world, that's exactly what it is. Like, <laughs> what do you like, think this is? It is like Christmas like, Day. You know, I know it's not working in the mines, and I say that often. I mean, this is a good job compared no, to totally. a lot of jobs that are out yeah. there. But it's also still a job. I don't. I mean, I'm not like loving this. I mean, I'm still going to work. <laughs> it's fun. Beca- it's fun when it's over because you're like, okay, listen. Especially when you get stuff right. I think yeah. we all take pride in making correct predictions. But it's not. It's definitely not Christmas. Especially the the frustration level, which I've kind of gotten over it now in the, the last few years. But you know, the kids stop talking to you, and I understand why. Sure. I would want to talk to me either. But then because you're a fat loser. Right. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, HR is going to hear from you after this podcast. We, we don't know where they're going, and then it's like we're expected to go on the aforementioned unprepared radio sure. shows and then, you know, try to figure out what's going on. So so that, that kind of stinks. But the only part is I'm saying just don't tell me it's Christmas. Don't ask me if it's Christmas Day. I, I cover recruiting. People always ask it. It's like when I used to cover whatever they make. You know, who are you a fan of? Like, oh, I bet you're a big, when I say I come recruiting, they go, I bet you're a big fan of what, who's your team? And I'm like, that's not none, what I none do. None of the teams. Yeah, that's <laughs> not what I do. So, uh, although, everyone, you're a huge Alabama fan if I go off the message board. Yeah, you called me yesterday an Auburn fan. Oh, did I? Well, I was wearing the tie. Oh, that's I had right. the colors. <laughs> All right. State so, of Alabama. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, you know me. I, we we do know have one coworker who tends to wear a hat with just the state of Alabama on it. So that's true. You know, a, a lot of us growing up on Long Island are huge Auburn and Alabama fans. I know. Listen, when I was living 13 miles from a town of 800 people on a Christmas tree farm, huge Alabama. Roll fan. Tide, baby. <laughs> you know what? You, you know the other thing you didn't mention that I know you kind <laughs> about of about a TV. That you've, you've touched on before about some of these radio hosts when they ask you. Who's the underrated player in this class? And you want to be like, bro, I make the rankings. Like, if yeah, they're right. underrated, it's, it's because I did right. it. Like, so I'm not going to come and on a, here. And, and a lot like, of times we argue, we will argue outside of the region. Yeah. Some of the guys that we work with are more conservative. Some of them. I, I might be one, one of the more conservative. Yeah, yeah you're definitely on. I gotta, it, we argue sometimes, but it's not a, there may be a guy in your states that I think is better. And there's, I know there's a 2017 player that the rest of the rivals analysts and I are going to butt heads over the entire cycle of where I think he should be ranked versus where they think he should be ranked because get, they don't see him in games. And that happened last year with Kyle Davis. The entire recruiting yep. industry took him and made him the number one wide receiver in the country after the opening, which is an event that, that we don't go to. Uh, but Nick and I had seen him play 10 times live, and, and Juwan passes, and he was a five-star other places, and Nick and I had seen him several times, and we just, I mean, we, we still think those guys are good players, but no. we didn't. I mean, if they're in those rankings at all, I mean. But the point is, we get out, you know, we're seeing them, whoever sees them more, sure. kind of defers. So anyway, don't ask me if it's like Christmas. It's not like Christmas. Like I said, it's like Christmas for Santa, and I imagine none of the kids talk to him. I bet, I bet Santa is so worn out. No, Santa, <laughs> boy, I bet Santa and his wife get into it after he gets home and she starts getting on him. Well, guess what? Christmas is over now. Get out and mow the lawn, you know, shovel that snow, whatever it's like up at the North Pole. I heard Mrs. Claus. She cracks the whip. She gets real gabby uh, when it comes to those uh, the honey-do list after Christmas is over. So She wasn't happy when... Uh, I saw Mama kissing Santa Claus came out. That was not well, sitting well enough. Guess what? Old. In Greece too, Santa Santa comes on New Year's Eve, so it's a whole week long, a week of work for him. <laughs> poor, poor Greek, poor Greek Santa. Yeah, jeez. I keep trying to remember what his name. Oh man, Santa is the ultimate fat loser. How did I let that go without calling that guy a fat loser? <laughs> I mean, my God. Uh, Nick, what do you got for us? Um. Well, you got you guys have all been you know Rob obviously makes a lot of Netflix references and uh, oh, in the recommendations show. you got my people got to understand my world is very small I work <laughs> a lot I sit in front of the computer and just video edit all day so uh, I don't have I'm not as open to as many different experiences as these two guys are but once I get a hold of a show and I really like it I'm really I'm really on top of it and Woody's been sick of hearing me talk about this forever and ever now but I flew through. There's only two seasons of it. Oh, there's two seasons? There's two seasons. <laughs> I flew through it in, in, a, in record time. Uh, it's a TV series based on the Dust Till Dawn movie, and it's on Netflix, and it's housed on the El Rey Network, which Rob and I obviously yeah. are big wrestling fans, which also has Lucha Underground, which just got renewed for another season, too. Thank so uh, my recommendation is if you have any even like sort of interest in the Dust Till 
Dawn movie from Quentin Tarantino. You'll really love this TV show. It really like cranks up to eleven, and uh, a lot a lot of multi layered storylines that I really got behind. And uh, that network in general, I think, is really on a you it know is. on another level. Absolutely, I'm going to start watching it as soon as I get back to Miami. I've never heard of said channel. Uh, I probably have it though because I pay a lot of money for my cable. Yeah, so. you definitely have. Lucha Underground uh, is big time, man. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm sure. I've also never heard of that until today. So, but it's owned by Univision, according to Wikipedia. So that would make sense why it has that. And from dusk till dawn. So, so where can you stream it? Netflix? Netflix. Okay. So Ios Vasilis is the name of Santa Claus in Greece. Uh, just Man, so that. my uh, family members don't uh, get on me for not remembering how to speak Greek, which I barely know yeah, how to do. We all know where I stand on Santa Claus. Uh, well, once you saw your mom making out with him, it kind of ruined it for you. <laughs> oh, 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 zing. <laughs> He's never talking to you Diana. again. Now, this so. is the maturity level on this podcast this week. Is That's high. where Rob got the fat loser thing from, is he was mad at Santa Claus from <laughs> <laughs> Jump Street. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I just think it's a great wrestling heel move to call people, especially people that are watching you or listening to you, fat losers. So uh, <laughs> that wraps it up for us. We hope you enjoyed the video side. I hope they let us air the video side, considering we're wearing uh, our civilian clothes yeah. and not uh, our uh, work gear. But guess what? It's what day is today? It's Listen, day, it's you day know what? It, it, it's the day after signing day. It's 7.43. We've we're got in the a office. Rivals logo there. We built this entire set ourselves. You know, listen, cut us some slack, huh? Yeah, well. Superiors. Yeah. Tell it to the judge. So that wraps it up for us. M. Deuce, big shout. Find him on SoundCloud. He provides the music for this show. That you're tapping your foot to right now. Oh, man. Listen, I have not heard one person that doesn't like this beat. It's good. I even our boy Blair Angulo, who, by the way, big shout to him. He I was playing it. in his car the other day. He sent me a Snapchat. Yeah, he plays the music in his car. So guess what? It's got 243 views on SoundCloud. How is that even possible? Guys, click on the thing. I know you listen to the podcast to the end. I, I see the analytics. Yep. Numbers. Especially our friends in Brazil. We're the number one recruiting podcast in Brazil. That's right. We, we pissed off... South Korea. <laughs> it we had come no back. South Korea listens. Did have one in Greece, though. The fam. It's probably Santa Claus. Who doesn't even speak English, supporting us. <laughs> uh, big shout to Canada. Two listens. Brazil, Italy, Sweden, and Poland. All right. Mm. That wraps it up. Awesome. <laughs> next, like, get us out of here. All right. We'll be back next week with another show.